Tim back till the next week of Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things, the interesting things, maybe some of the strange things we found going on in the world of open source, Linux, and basically anything else that kind of catches our interest. I'm Ben Stone. That's Joel Bryant, and over there is Pedro Mateus, and everyone. Hello. Everyone goofing hello, off hello. watching us live <laughs> in the middle of the day. Hi, you're supposed to be working. Oh, we won't narc on you, man. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. What's up? What's new? A uh, bunch of stuff going on. Earlier, like, first thing this morning, FedEx guy shows up, and he's like, hey, remember that half a grand video encoder you bought? I'm like, Four months ago, I'm like, yeah, Blackmagic sent it back to you. It took them two months. We, they determined nothing wrong with it. It's functioning perfectly normal. So, yeah. Mm. <laughs> That's a thing. Um, oh, poor Ben. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm going to see what I can do with like um, the developer side of Blackmagic because I do have one guy there that I was working back and forth with before I RM, RMA'd the thing because I couldn't spend more time like if it was defective we'd never figure it out and i don't want to spend three months getting that sorted out worst case scenario i'm gonna to have to buy a new thread ripper motherboard looking forward to that mm. but but back here i am testing another blue interface that you can see it's uh if i put one more blue piece of equipment into this rack james cameron's gonna show up and try to film it <laughs> <laughs> It's getting out of control, man. That's what's new with me. What's up with you, Joe? Oh, well, St my husband and I had a wonderful uh, Fourth of July trip. It wasn't very far, very long, but it was just to get out of the house a bit and go go somewhere. And it was because everyone's staying at home. There was no one around, so we had, we were on on our own, which was really nice. So we got to see some nice sights. <laughs> And I had fun buying uh, quite a few games from the Steam Summer Sale. And, uh, yeah. So, lots of games there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, over here, I, um, I've been working a lot. Um, that, that's basically it. And uh, as comfy as um, this particular chair is, I was forced to get uh, an extra cushion for but health reasons mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> yeah no um yeah no the 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 padding on the uh on the actual seat was uh appropriate but not anymore <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, i understand <laughs> it's revenge of the dragons all i can say about that yeah <laughs> oh. hey everyone we need to panic and overreact <laughs> yeah. Uh. yeah, well, a lot of people uh, panicked. Uh, in <laughs> fact, if you were uh, looking at the uh, Linux subreddit earlier this week, you may have seen it's like, who knows? LibreOffice is going to have a paid version. It's going to have a license. It's going to have this and that. It's like, cool it, right? Because LibreOffice nope. have made a... Sorry, Pedro, I'm the internet. <laughs> 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 they weren't entirely wrong, but uh, the official statement from uh, the Document Foundation is that the LibreOffice 7.0 RC, which came labeled as Personal Edition, uh, was them sort of kind of jumping the shark, as it were, because, yeah, a lot of people freaked the heck out. It's like, oh, there's going to be a monetized version. There may be one in the future, uh, according to their statement, they are trying to make it basically the same way that uh, Red Hat does. Mm -hmm. uh, they yeah. offer you a license for support. Let's say you're a big enterprise and you don't want to deal with it and you just want, you know, the liability to lie somewhere else. So you pay LibreOffice or the Document Foundation a bit of a license and they will sort out your issue. Maybe. In the future, they say that they've retracted that since, you know, they, they're still there's still ongoing discussions with the community, obviously, uh, and that people shouldn't freak out, please. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I was freaking out. Did you say something? <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> no, man. Um, here's one of the things I'm thinking about with that is, you know, they, they straight up made a whoopsie. I, that's what that was. Yep. They're like, ah, yeah, this, is, this is an idea. This is a thought. This is something we're thinking about, not necessarily working on just yet, and we didn't mean to put that out there. Then 
Because then you got to roll back and be like, okay, now we really have to come up with something, but we don't want to put anything like in stone because we're not sure exactly how this is going to play out. So it put them in a very difficult position. But I see where they're going with because, you know, getting software approved in an enterprise environment, step one, you know, when you go to your purchasing operator or whoever you're dealing with, they're going to be like, so who do we blame when it breaks? Yeah. And if you can't give them an easy, accessible target because community forums, that, that's a non-starter. They want, like, who do we call? And, you know, they don't want the Ghostbusters, but they'll take them if they can provide support for the software. So, yeah, that's just reality of it. I mean, I don't see reason to panic because they've like it's always going to be a personal edition you have to worry about. And it's going to be a thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, well, yeah. Uh, if they start a business model, though, it um, definitely makes sense. Because, you know, because of development and support, that, that, that's a big deal. And now that LibreOffice is being used more in the enterprise and government sector, it just, it, it makes sense that they would come out with a business model. And cause yeah, it's especially, used more and more. especially because business is like what Ven was yeah. saying. It's like, we really don't want to take charge for this. So if we have to pay to get a license to get it properly supported, we will. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. it. <laughs> Makes sense. So calm down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> calm down. We do have a little bit of good news. Uh, something we once yeah. had, which was taken away, is now back, but only if you really, really want it. You have to really want it. Uh, this is Dex on Linux. And you may remember Dex as the uh, little desktop Linux that if you had a Samsung phone, you could plug it into the Dex dock. And it would, if you had a screen plugged into it uh, with a mouse and keyboard, it would become like a full desktop uh, version of whatever Linux distro was bundled into their Android phones. I think it was Debian. Um, This is a little bit different. It works in a similar way, but you're not uh, using it directly on uh, on a monitor directly from the phone because that feature is going away. Samsung said that they're not going to be developing DeX anymore. But if you have a phone that did support it, you can still use it, but you will require one of these. This one's a Dell, but it doesn't have to be (laughs) this one specifically. It's a HDMI out with a Type-C dock, effectively, Mm -hmm. that will charge your phone. And um, basically, if the uh, whatever Type-C device is plugged in there is uh, DisplayPort or HDMI enabled, then that Type-C will also carry the video signal. And on top of that, you'll have to plug in a dummy uh, HDMI yeah. device. <laughs> uh, it's just, uh. it's usually just like a dummy <laughs> that says, no, there, there's totally a um, yep. a monitor connected here. Just, just give me that resolution. And then it uses screen copy to which we've talked about uh on this very show to display that signal that's being sent to the dummy device so it's a bit of a roundabout way to go at it i'm gonna say so but it just, works just a little <laughs> bit man but you know since samsung you know they killed the linux beta it's really your only option this reminds me of some rube goldberg contraptions that i've come up with because someone said you can't do that like Give me a minute. <laughs> How is that possible? And not in a good way. They're not saying it because they're impressed. They're like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, but it's working, right? See? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. outside of just like the thought experiment or to go through it, maybe you know, definitely pick up some knowledge. You'd be, you know, you got to compile some stuff from source. It might be new to you. I was down with this right up until it was like HDMI. Nah, nope, I'm out. All right. What about you, Joe? It's just a yeah. dummy plug. Oh, I, I <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it really, you know, it really did seem like it does seem like a lot of a lot of work, but you know, it doesn't take too much time to do. It's just getting all the parts together and, and compiling the software. And but a lot of people missed having the Samsung desktop experience on Linux. That was definitely a thing. And I think our own Linux Gnuru in chat used to love it and was sad when they got rid of it. Hmm. So, yeah, yeah, maybe he'll enjoy doing this <laughs> with this phone again. <laughs> oh, go ahead, Jill. You're going to try to make a use case for this. Oh, I'm very, very excited <laughs> the, for this. This is the Max Interactive Desktop version 2.1. Oh, 2.1, excuse me. And 
This, for all of you out there who've been using Linux and U Unix a long time, this is a re-implementation of the IRIX desktop from SGI machines running on Linux. And, you know, it's tailored for, towards the graphic professionals, the CG artists and animators, and those of us who have worked in the motion picture and special effects studios. That looks very 1990s. Yep. Yes, it, it definitely is. <laughs> you know, old school <laughs> Unix. I had, had installed the previous version uh, to play around with it. Uh, but there's some enhancements in this one, including um, better uh, multi-monitor support with, with Zynorama, which is really cool. And this is just a really, really cool desktop, honestly, that Hollywood really needs. Um, you know, I had, I'd, I'd learned Alias Wavefront on um, an IRIC system on my SGI machine years ago. And it was, you know, low resource, low memory, and a really fast desktop uh, for rendering. And we need, we need that in the Linux world for computer graphics and modeling right now. Uh, especially since the Linux world is now open sourcing all the things. No, I, um, I, I absolutely and, hear your side of the argument, yeah. John, but... <laughs> <laughs> yes. We already have yeah. that and have had it for decades. Is, I'm not talking about XFC. I mean, we're, we're, we're talking like uh, after step. We're talking about um, enlightenment. I mean, if you want to ultra oh, new yeah. step. But then again, <laughs> yes. on the other side of that, this is 2020 where you can buy a desktop not a thread ripping thing, a desktop CPU with 12 cores. 16. Yes. Or 16 <laughs> if you want to get crazy with it. 3950. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you can throw 64 gigs of it. It's like, it doesn't matter how many, just run gnome. Ha! Ah, be, be drunk with power. <laughs> so, you know, this is a continuation of the 5DWM project. Uh, that's old, 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 but. I looked at it and I didn't get a chance to play with it, mainly because it's only available as, you know, just a .sh package that you can install. Uh, it's available for Ubuntu, Debian, and Arch right now, 64-bit only. Consider getting that packaged, maybe, and, you know, just make it easier to pop it in mm -hmm. and pop it out. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it is pretty much a straight-up clone of the old Indigo Magic desktop. You know, that was yeah. the first thing they had for the IRIX back in the day. But, um, you know, the new thing with UTF-8 support, and gang of bug fixes. But yeah, thankfully desktops have evolved since the 90s because <laughs> I saw that and I'm like, that's horribly bad and inefficient way of doing things. Um, <laughs> it reminded me a lot of haiku. <laughs> well, yeah. it, it, when I see like, I, 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 I'm not knocking because some people, this is your jam, go for it, man. Um, I, I look at it through like an efficiency workflow really compared with my ex. If, you, if you've seen my desktop, you're like, yeah, okay, fine. But yeah, I, I think things have evolved. Yeah. Plus, I've, I was always a fan of CDE. Deal with it. Yeah, CDE is cool. Yeah. And FVWM, which I used to use a lot for graphics as well. <laughs> I think that's it. Uh, I'm in a pinch. Yeah. I'll deal with that. <laughs> Go check it out if you want. Um, it's Max with two X's interactive dot com. That'll be in the show notes along with everything else. Yeah. <laughs> but maybe, maybe running an, an IRIC style desktop's not hipster enough for you, man. You <laughs> oh, no, you can run it. You can run it directly from mtty uh -oh. and i was uh. very disappointed because this was not a mic t hand to yourself so uh yes that's me uh my week ruined right there so no it's uh emptty or mt and what it does it's a command line desktop manager that that that's basically it uh it allows you instead of like when you turn on your PC mm -hmm. and you see LightDM or SDDM or GDM for GNOME, uh, you will instead see the command line. And the command line will just like, okay, so what's your login? What's your password? And then it gives you a choice with all of the desktop environments slash um, window managers that you have installed. And they have the screenshots like GNOME, uh, KDE, Openbox, Sway, Weston. Weston's... It's the window manager and the compositor. Don't but judge. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's just a TTY uh, DM 
which if you want to remove any and all overhead from even running a desktop manager, I guess. Uh, yeah. I mean, outside of just <laughs> messing with people, is there some valid use cases for this? Uh, I'm open it's to ideas. Fast. <laughs> it's it's re it's really fast. <laughs> it's built in Go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> See, I like it now. That's weird. Um, <laughs> that, okay, fine. <laughs> uh, that, that, yeah. That, I mean, it's a desktop manager. It just ha happens to have a command line interface rather than a graphical one. So, all right. Yeah. Do you use Back in the manager? old days of X start. Start X. On this box, it boots directly into the desktop because uh -huh. it's a desktop PC. It's not going to go anywhere. But on um, on the laptops, I use LightDM usually. Yeah, I use LightDM on this box because of, there's an issue with the force full composition pipeline that effectively adds another layer of security into locking into this box <laughs> unless you know the cryptic <laughs> key presses mm. to get into XFCE4. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's... I use Light DM too because I I I go back and forth to lots of window managers, so <laughs> I'm in there a lot. I've got Light DM and GDM three. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I've always I think I've just always used Light DM, not for any reason really. I can. I think I have SDDM installed because that's the default with mm. uh, KDE. Okay. But I yeah, ever since I installed KDE Neon on it, I think I saw it once, and then I set it to auto login. Like they're done. <laughs> well, you're going to need a desktop if you want to play around with Town Music Box. What is it? You never heard of it me either until very recently. It's yet another music player for the Linux desktop. It's designed to be simple, streamlined, putting a user control. It uses GStreamer and Bass Audio Library for playback. Now, just looking at the screenshots, I'm looking, I'm getting like some classic Amarok vibes from that. <laughs> just a little bit. You have your album art over to the right, and kind of into just left of center. You have your music playlist, and you got some little album cover art over there. Um, plenty of features, man. They say fast, responsive UI, drag and drop, all the fun stuff that you might expect. You can even stream in from Plex, uh, Last FM, Scrobbling, whatever that is. Man, it has it, and yeah. uh, it's also available as a flat pack. Like, huh. It is, nice. which is really nice. I like flat packs. Uh, I was going through the notes. It's like, ooh, flat pack. Hit the button. Uh, Discover showed up. It's like, would you like to install Talon Music Box? I'm like, yes, yes, I would. Thank you very much. <laughs> and um, you start it up, and it looks really nice. And I was going through the uh, the settings, and it's like, ooh, you can log in with Spotify and import all of your existing playlists. Oh. That, that's interesting. <laughs> and uh, But I did find a bit of an issue with it because when I pointed it at the uh, SMB uh, server on the on the NAS, it's like that's your music folder. Go get it. It did, and then I picked a song that I knew uh, it didn't have any cover art in, in the file. So I right clicked on the cover art, just like do a quick search for it, and it did. And it found it and then applied that same cover art for all the other songs in that folder mm -hmm. that didn't have any cover art. It's like, that's still an issue. Because no. I was dealing with that in <laughs> Windows Media Player in however long ago that was. <laughs> it, everything's nice and unified now, man. Come on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, basically now uh, the entire black album uh, from Metallica has the Groove Armada same art. album cover. <laughs> Conformity, Aww. man. There's something good to be said about that. Yeah. 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 I, I you know, one of the features I really liked was the gapless uh, 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 playback between songs. And part of that is because I listen to electronic music, uh, synth, like droning synth music. And then that's nice because you don't have a gap between the tracks. It's really nice. And I love that the album art and um, gallery displays are much larger. Um, um, they're actually a lot larger than some of the other um, music apps out there. 
That's cool. Go check it out. Yeah. I still think of you're, you're, both of you are a bunch of weirdos for having like local music. Like, ah, stream it. Ah. <laughs> I'm technically streaming it from a computer that's from your cloud. right underneath the other one, but yeah, yeah. it's there. It's connected by it. Ethernet. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> No, that's cool, man. That's cool. There's something to be said about having local media. So if there's one thing I don't put any faith in, it's online <laughs> lists. List yes. goals, if you will. <laughs> Things that are ranked. <laughs> okay, so this is really cool because it's, it's Fa FOSS, um, an online Linux news uh, website. You know, ask the community on Twitter and the social networkings about uh, what was their favorite Linux podcast. And ours got included in, in that list of 15, <laughs> which was really nice, as well as uh, uh, Destination Linux and Jupiter Broadcasting uh, shows and uh, Linux for the rest of us. Um, and well, that was Linux nice. That, that was nice to see. It's like, oh, you're yes. still around. Very good. Yes. Door to door geek. Yes. <laughs> yeah, door to door great geek. And, and he's one of our patrons as well. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, there's uh, we got Linux for everyone on there. Linux headlines from Jupiter Broadcasting, Command Line Heroes, uh, Choose Linux, which isn't around anymore, but I do love that show. And of course, the Linux Action Show, which isn't with us anymore. But um, there's just, it, it's all my, they're all my favorite podcasts. And it was, it's just a really it, that was an honor to be part of part of this. It was really an honor that we got in there. <laughs> My bad. Linux Look at those cast. three. <laughs> <laughs> Pedro, what are your thoughts on her? Yeah, so I've read the articles like I asked this question on social media based on the feedback. Like I'm surprised <laughs> there were enough people that admitted to listening to this nonsense that we've made it as high up that list as we did. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. You're, you're slightly less allergic to attention than I am. I'm like, all right, fine. Um, I don't mind attention up to a certain point. To a point. You don't actively avoid it. I'm Neo Dodge Bullet. I'm like, ah. <laughs> I usually, I don't actually, uh, I don't actively avoid it because most of the time I'm not paying attention. Oh, but I do want to say hello, new, new people. <laughs> Hi. Um, I don't know if you're listening, but I do know that you've been downloading for the past couple of days. Love you, Cloudflare. Thank Yay. you. <laughs> that took a little bit of a jump, but, you know, it's a bunch of curiosity downloads. I don't expect that tsunami wave of, like, give me money to continue, hopefully. Um, <laughs> but mm -hmm. speaking of tsunami waves of money, if you would like to help us with that and our crazy business model of, like, just putting stuff out there, and if you like it, amen, maybe become a patron, support some of the crazy stuff we do. We have Libra Pay, we have merch, buy shirts, no fanny packs, just mm -hmm. hit PayPal, we got wish list, <laughs> uh, Bitcoin, that magic internet money. I hear that stuff's completely worthless, send it all to us. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? It took a, a swan dive a long time ago. Bitcoin cash. So, That's yeah, when you got to save that. Send it to send us. us those useless Bitcoins. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. When I think of how many Bitcoins I've just burned. <laughs> I don't do that because, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, I never really got into the Bitcoin thing, so I'm not terribly worried about that. And like that guy that had twenty thousand or something in a hard drive in a computer yeah. that he tossed yeah. <laughs> with a hundred thousand or whatever it was for wow. a pizza. But I do want to give a nice big shout out to uh, Captain Zero. Yay. As you can see, the uh, increase the pledge to two fifty, making them a sea monster. On our Patreon, um, speaking of which, if you wonder where we're hanging out the other six days of the week, it's in our Discord. You get to hop in there, but at that level, you get access to our show notes. Uh, also, you get access to the pre-pre-super shows, and we call it the creep shows. And on Saturday, an hour before we go live to the masses, uh, we have our little production meeting. We invite everyone to uh, come say, hey, I'm going to listen to that. Make funny jokes, too. And we talk about weird stuff, usually movie reviews. And uh, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff just not not what we normally would cover uh, when we're alive. But and that, if you think the show's already a bit uh, playing fast and loose with the whole format, let's call it that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's no format. Yeah, there's no. It's, 
making that public it's also available as a podcast later for patrons because you get your custom rss feed you get access to early we get a gang of stuff we we just keep giving stuff away and we're like hopefully you like it help us out but if you don't everything is free so uh that's also a thing i was going somewhere but i've lost my track i think we're just going to have to get <laughs> right in to a slice a pie. Of pie. I don't know if <laughs> sleeveless shirts. A tank top. Yes. Do sleeveless shirts? Well, um, we could have have a, a a tank top LWW shirt. I've got my regular LWW shirt on. Yeah, LWW. over here, uh, LWW. people call those the wife beaters. So <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> UASP Raspberry Pi for disk IO is 50% faster. Why is that, Pedro? Well, uh, apparently, this person I uh, started reading is like, oh, apparently, um, I plugged in a hard drive to USB 3 to my Raspberry Pi 4 and discovered that it was about five times faster than the uh, micro SD card. It's like, uh, yeah, it. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. Is this actually the thing? But no, he actually decided to take the next logical step instead of, you know, just getting one of these um, little USB adapters that you plug a hard drive in, plug the other side into USB, and away you go. No, no, no. He went the extra mile and uh, pulled uh, the uh, PCB out of one of the external hard drive enclosures that you can add your own hard drive to and just made it work. And... Clearly, the um, power consumption is a little bit higher, not a whole lot, because compared to, like, the um, UASP and the USB storage, it's, what's that, like, 50 watts-ish mm -hmm. difference, give or take? Yeah. <laughs> I can't count that high. <laughs> like, 0.50 of a watt is like, eh. I don't know. I mean, like the random rates, you're looking at like 35% faster, uh, writes 20% faster. This is definitely something you might want to look into if you're one of the psychopaths that want to make a pie NAS. Oh, yeah. yeah definitely. <laughs> you need something like either USB 3 or one of those um, like interposers for the PCIe um, mm -hmm. lanes in the uh, Raspberry Pi. You put in one of those with like one PCIe lane, you can drive two SATA ports easily. So, so would yeah. you call that like a bifurcated PINAS? <laughs> yes. <Okay>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, as it turns out, hard drives are faster than SD cards. Why? Yeah. And and you know, this actually <laughs> this actually makes makes sense because this the SCSI standard, which I I have hundreds of SCSI hard drives in this room, but the SCSI standard uses constant bit rate instead of burst via controller card. So they've are, are obviously enhanced this driver um, to utilize that technology more, which is really good. Well, and it makes this copying large to the pie files of the enclosure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't do any pie surgery. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what the pie has those um, GPIO pins exposed for. It, it's for exactly for people looking to tinker with it. So, yeah, if you can make a hat like some people already have that have SATA ports or enough USB connections for you to run a proper USB 3 bus off of it that you can plug a bunch of external hard drives into... Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, what was it? Like two weeks ago, we were covering that. It was like straight up soldered a PCIe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I appreciate and, that. Um, That's not necessarily my. Go ahead. What is this? This <laughs> is a micro SD card. Don't it's actually it. one of the uh, dual uh, uh, pin one. layer ones I am that has. Genuinely shocked in order to let you have something that small. <laughs> I don't put it in my mouth anymore. Yeah. But it uh, loses things easily, so <laughs> that's why. But the um the thing is, like these, uh, this one is reasonably fast. It's got like 120 megabytes sequential writes, which is amazing for an SD card. How many once yeah. can it do that? 
Yeah, the, the ones. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the moment you, it has like any kind of um, storage on it that, that you're storing any kind of like, say, the Raspberry Pi OS. Uh, yeah, no, that tanks. But the um, a hard drive will sustain up to 200 and something megabytes per second on a write all the time. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Scuzzy. <laughs> oh man, Scuzzy. That, that that's definitely a uh, interesting piece of history. But mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> everything's going over a Scuzzy bus in its own special way. I mean, the Linux kernel SATA implementation was based on the Scuzzy implementation. Scuzzy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that turned out to be a problem not too long ago. <laughs> well, I mean, if you want to get off lawns, man, the first ATA um, disk burners uh, we had, you had to like set up generic uh, Scuzzy host emulation support in the kernel in order to get it. In. We're talking like 1996 yeah. to kids. Um, if you want to share your stories uh, about having to do weird stuff with Linux, Email Jill. She'll talk yes. to you about it for hours. <laughs> but if you have some real questions, thoughts, hints, allegations, things maybe better left unsaid, how can they get us, Pedro? You can get us in a multitude of ways. You can basically lasso us like you would um, spaghetti. Have you ever tried to lasso us? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, spaghetti would be a good idea. Uh, the best way to do it is to go to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the contact button and you fill out the form. Make sure you pick LWDW as the show that you're sending your feedback to. Otherwise, you may inadvertently end up sending some hate mail. Mm, yes. <laughs> No hate but mail here, it's week, love mail. <laughs> yes, this week we did have a bit of love mail from Linus. We did? Not that one. <laughs> oh, uh, yo, another guy named Linus. Oh, from not Finland that one. Here. Or that other one. Yes. What about the, no, not that one either. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I love his wacky tech tips. What do you Aww. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, this one is a Finnish Linus. And um, I ha he says, I have gathered, noticed, picked that Van seems to be more cool on showing his overly manly face on recent times, on recent episodes. No harm or offense meant. Too late. <laughs> Thanks, uh, you... I read ping that. Beans? I didn't even. Okay, I read that as ping beavers. I didn't know what. Yeah, I, was I didn't know what that <laughs> meant. <laughs> beings. Okay. Ping Pingy. And keep on sliding. Beans. It's all good for Linux. Pedro is very uh, is a very beautiful man too. It's like, how dare you? I've been doing my damnedest to cover my face on this with this pretense <laughs> of a beard. How dare you? <laughs> Aww. Aww. But you're so young, Pedro, and full of. Well, you're so young. <laughs> I'm 33. Oh, you're so young. Weeks. You're so young. <laughs> you could like, legitimately like be Jill's son. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You don't even have to get like crazy with the math on that. Side. No. <laughs> Jordan Aww. could be a grandkid. Yeah. That'd be stretchy. Yeah, Jill is about the same age yeah. as my mom, so. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, my God. That gives you perspective. <laughs> on, that, on that timely bombshell, we got to bounce out of here. We're going to roll some credits. Thanks for showing up, and we'll see you next week. Huh? Yes. All right. We love you, everyone. <laughs> Unless we all run away in the meantime. Yeah. <laughs> Steve Husband says bad perspective on, on Pedro being our son. <laughs> I'm not going to apologize. Oh, nope. you'd be a good son. <laughs> Just talk to his mom. Oh. <laughs> Oh, thank you to all our beautiful producers and executive producers. Scott broke out the Steve Walker. Yes. <laughs> oh. I made that just for Steve so we could participate with us. <laughs> yeah, brother Jack, Jelly Bean in chat. Yeah, uh, Pedro would be your grandson because my brother's older than I am. <laughs> and so is Steve Husband. He's even older. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Good night.